Oh, yeah. It's a light one, but uh, we'll kick this guy mm-hmm. off. So welcome to the community call. It's March 28th, our last one of Q1. Is that correct? End of Q1 is uh, like three days. Big deal. I'm excited mm-hmm. about that. Um, today's community call, it's a little bit light. We've got um, an overview. Shane's going to do our product updates. We'll have him kick off earlier than usual. Um, and then I want to do some brainstorming for this RFP Bonanza. So trying to figure out how we can get more people engaged as they come into the community. We do have a lot of updates for the overview today. So things that are happening in the DAO, post uh, proposals passed and things coming. It kind of actually feels like like you would expect at the end of a quarter, like all of the things that we've been working on are kind of coming to a head here. So um, we'll talk about those, including the cred stuff shortly, but we're going to do a little out of order today. And I'm going to pass it over to Shane to do uh, product updates right at the start here. So over to you, Shane. Cool, cool. Uh, Not at my regular setup, so uh, coming through my phone, but I hope you guys can hear me well. All right. Uh, Just want to give a quick update on Morse. The space proposal, which is PUP33, it has passed. Uh, What this does is this opens up Morse to now being able to expand more gateways. Uh, And if you guys remember, there was uh, there was a pop earlier this year for Liquify and Raid Guild to build uh, gateways. Uh, Now the uh, the protocol is basically ready to scale to more gateways. So this uh, will obviously include both of them. I also want to say Raid Guild uh, and and I believe Liquify have been doing uh, updates uh, in the forum as well. So if people have questions about how that's been progressing, um, there's. There have actually been a number of uh, cool updates from them uh, explaining what they've been building and what they've accomplished. So always uh, feel free to check those out. On the Shannon side, uh, the Morse testnet, um, the Morse testnet maintainers, uh, which uh, was uh, a pop from earlier, was it earlier this year or late last year? Um, yeah, there was a, a, a pop to onboard some maintainers for the testnet, and they've now been helping the protocol team a bunch with deploying new, uh, it, deploying part of the Shannon private testnet. Uh, it's been going really well, and there have been basically tons of really good feedback uh, we've been getting from them. So it's cool to get the community involved uh, and people that are specifically helping with maintaining the current testnet, being involved with uh, testing out the current proposal or the current protocol. And then uh, uh, one thing that's actually interesting is actually last night, uh, testnet broke. So uh, <laughs> that's the purpose of the private testnet is to uh, try things and, uh, uh, you know, break things and then iterate quickly. So that was just a cool tidbit and uh, uh, shows why we're kind of keeping it to a small, uh, small specialized group that can help with uh, quickly starting new testnets once it breaks. Um uh, it, regarding some cool uh, uh, milestones, the claiming proof lifecycle code uh, has been completed, which is uh, a great milestone. Uh, this basically allows the protocol to to have ser- suppliers be able to say, "Hey, I did uh, I did this much uh, work," and then the network is able to validate that, verify that through proofs. Um, this is also uh, what was audited. Uh, earlier this year and came back with uh, very positive results. And so that's now uh, inside of testnet, which is awesome. And then, uh, oh, but, you know, granted, this is still testnet, so there are still likely to be iterations on that as uh, things progress. But that was still a cool milestone, nevertheless. And the tokenomics module PR has uh, been started. So there's actually a PR for it, uh, started by Oshansky. And what this does is this allows, uh, because how the Cosmos SDK works is you have all these modules and you can program how all these modules interface with each other. And so what they built, uh, what they're building now is basically this uh, bare bones uh, module that is able to take all the tokenomics logic uh, and all the tokenomics logic is delegated to this module. So that's what's been started. Um, It's not any specific kind of uh, model, uh, like economic model or tokenomics model, specifically inside of it. It just is the, uh, it's it's laying the foundation so that we can add uh, a number of different economic models and uh, things of that nature inside of it. So basically just laying the groundwork for tokenomics, which is a cool, uh, cool milestone. So basically that's what's uh, been going down in the last two weeks um, and some cool milestones. So 
Uh, pass it back to you, Zach, unless there's any questions. Heck yeah! Thanks, Shane. Yeah, I'll take a beat here if anybody has any questions. That's awesome. Um, congratulations on the first broken test net. Like, sign of things going well, right? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's exactly it. <laughs> you actually know things are moving when uh, things are breaking, so that's exciting. I love that. Cool, Shane. I really appreciate the update. That's um, that's super helpful for me, and I'm excited to hear more. So, if anybody has any questions, um, I think Shane's going to have to drop out shortly, but feel free to ask him now, or put anything in chat, and I can relay it later. All right, cool. Um, I'm going to go back to the standard format here. Thank you so much, Shane, for joining us and giving us the updates. Um, I just want to do a couple shout outs here. So uh, if you haven't heard the ecosystem call from yesterday, it was excellent. And I think the majority of the conversation was based on AI. So a big shout out to Jinx for hosting it uh, and contributing. And then Steve and Dermot and Shane and Ramiro. And we had a new participant from Raid Guild, Sayonara, who came in with some great questions, too. So I just want to say it was a really great call. If you haven't heard it and you're interested in AI, um, you can check it out. Jerry, I don't know if you're able to grab the link and put it into chat, but it'll make it easy for everybody. Um, or you can just go to the Pocket YouTube and, and listen to it there. Um, I also want to do a quick shout out to Ben. So Ben can't make most of these calls because I think it's like 2 a.m. Australia time, but um, he's done a ton of backend work on creds. He's been doing a lot of work on getting retro PGF ready. And then he's also been doing a lot of operation stuff for PNF. So some of our pain points around um, accounting and our operations, he's really been taking on. So I just want to give Ben a big shout out uh, for all the stuff that he's doing that people don't get to see. So thanks, Ben. And I'm going to give it a beat if anybody wants to thank anybody else here for the work that they're doing. Now's your chance. I feel like I need the Jeopardy music for this, right? Like, give me something going. So anyways, thank you all for the hard work you're doing. I know everybody here is doing work, and I really appreciate how you show up for us. So high five to you all. Um, we've got a bunch of announcements today, so I'm going to make my way through them. Um, first of all, DAO proposals. So the big one right now is the Pocket and Masari um, reporting renewal. So that's up for vote right now. Jinx, not to put you on the spot, but I know you had a, a conversation um, with them about it. I don't know if there's anything you want to say um, or anything people should pay attention to or if they should just head to the forum and give the input they need. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I think there's been a lot of uh, varying thoughts about how effective Masari was as a partner in the last year. And we saw some of that conversation come out um, from my conversations with them. Um, it, it appears that they not only acknowledge that, but they're committed to, to making it better and making sure that Pocket is appropriately centralized in conversations where it's relevant and uh, that they've expanded staff to be able to um, have a better uh, a grasp on the total ecosystem and, and to serve that. And then, you know, my, my conservative uh, uh, financials type friends just say that uh, Masari is like uh, being part of Bloomberg in uh, a traditional market, that it's something that adds legitimacy and credibility. Um, and so it's worth having just for that sake. I'm, you know, I'm going to vote in favor of it, of course, and uh, I would encourage others to do the same if you feel the same. Thanks, Jinx. That's a great summary, too. And um, I think that's the way that PNF feels as well as like, as we're moving uh, closer to being the tier one project that we want to be, the legitimacy from Masari is is just impossible to overlook. So. Um, I really appreciate that and appreciate your vote. Dermot, I see on here, I don't know if you want to give any more color to that. I, I think Jinx has articulated it really well. Um, I, 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 even the first few reports, even the first report, I think last year actually was a bit of a wake-up call, I think, to certain institutions out there and others that thought Pocket was dead almost. They're like, oh, okay, cool. Pocket's around. Masari's talking about it. Um, and as they work, it's they have the kind of the core research team, which essentially just presents on-chain metrics that are verifiable. Um, and they wrap that up in a quarterly way, so it keeps you on track. It shows you your performance over time. I think as Pocket grows from strength to strength, more gateways, more data sources, more demand, that's going to be a really helpful touch point. Um, people look back and they can see that growth and additionally by being um as part of their research team um and fully integrated 
it just makes it way more likely that we'll be included um, as part of their many industry reports, events, podcasts, all of that kind of stuff. So it's it's one of those things that is somewhat intangible. Um, but I think that kind of, the, as I talked about, I think we talked about a couple of um, community calls around becoming tier one. I'm not aware of any tier one project. I'm sure there must be one that isn't part of this. Um, and all of this helps just to be in the right places and people talking about Pocket for the, the right reasons. And if you um, if you look at one of the issues of Pocket right now, it's it's clearly awareness and actually awareness for the right reasons, not just momentary buzz. It's the deeper stuff and uh, knowledge of our our vision, our mission, and actually the good stuff we're doing. And so the more top quality publications talking about Pocket in the right way, I think is only going to help us in the long run. I think all this compounds over time. Yeah, Dermot, thank you so much for that. Um, so I, I think if anybody does have any thoughts that they want to get out, uh, heading to the forums, the right place to do that. But um, Jinx, unless you have any final thoughts, I think we'll, we'll move on from this one. But um, encourage everybody who has a vote, please go out there and vote. Um, and then to wrap up the other ones, so we had three votes that have ended in the last couple of days. Um, so PEP68 for the BlockWorks research, that uh, passed. So we'll kick off the research report. Um, I think ads is going to be spearheading that piece of it. Um, the DAO appointed board observer. So CryptoCorn has won with 13 votes. Congratulations, CryptoCorn. Excited to have you as an observer on the board. Um, PNF, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in the next slide, but um, PNF still has to appoint their board observer. So uh, we will probably have more information about that towards the end of next week with um, how mm -hmm. it's going to work. And then I'm sure CryptoCorn, as part of the responsibilities, will be um, telling you what what's going on as well. So congratulations again, CryptoCorn. And the last one is the PEP67 providing pocket liquidity to become a tier one project. Um, I'm going to talk a little about that here. So, uh, you know, the the tier one project, we had a couple of really nice surprises this week. Um, I think the upbit listing yesterday morning, um, I think Jinx, you said it nicely. When you wake up to 300 messages, uh, you know, something either really good or really bad has happened. And uh, I think it's great that we got that listing. Dermot summarized it really nicely for us that Upbit's one of the hardest exchanges to get listed on in the world because they have high listing standards and they're basically number two in the world for volume. So um, there's some really nice validation in that and congratulations to all of you for the work that you've done to get us there. So Upbit, it's a big win. And then as far as the liquidity updates, um, I think Dermot said that there's going to be uh, another week or so because we're going back and forth on some contracts. So we won't actually be appointing our market makers until then. Um, but as soon as we have information, we will post it to the forums. Yeah, I'm happy to give a little bit more color on that. So, Please. so we have nine market makers, I think it's nine or 10 um, that are, uh, yeah, basically have been um, asked to submit a proposal as part of this R RFP process. The deadline, I think, think is uh, is sometime later this evening I, th I think it's kind of midnight my time i think i forget what time that is eastern or pacific coin watch you're leading it are actually based in um it's actually based in singapore even though that's french and in classic fashion all market makers typically submit their bids pretty last minute so i guess so they have the best market information and have time to crunch everything so we actually won't get all of our bids until tonight um and then we will quickly be able to negotiate filter out those ones that clearly aren't getting close to what we expect. And once we have the last few bids, we can have them negotiate against each other to really make sure we get the best terms. And then once we kind of, then we finalize the contracts, appoint the two um, market makers and essentially give them the liquidity. So ideally we have all this wrapped up um, within the next week, but it may take a little bit longer. Um, so I think in two weeks max, ideally one week. So that's, that's kind of the timelines we're working towards. Um, so the process did actually kick off before the proposal um, finished um, on the expectation that we had hope for one, we were, we were getting fairly positive um, feedback and, and ultimately if we needed to go back to the drawing board and reduce um, the ask, we can do that. Um, that's the good thing about this process is it's flexible. Um, so one, if we don't have all the capital, we can we'll get less we'll get lower liquidity uh, metrics but we can still get a really good deal and a hell of a lot better than we currently have um, but thankfully the proposal passed the upbit listing uh, seems to have boosted the price 
as well, which will help us, meaning we'll have to spend less pocket. And actually, I think even seeing that boost should actually help market makers realize they really do want to be part of this um, hopeful rocket ship um, about what we're doing. So yeah, I guess um, you summed it up well, Zach. We'll, um, we'll be sharing more updates next week and then I think much more substantial uh, information, I guess, in the weeks after as um, you'll, you'll ultimately see the depth in the books. Um, and we, we can um, be sharing regular updates on that. Thanks, Dermot. Yeah, I'm I'm super excited. I'm sure everybody else here is. It's uh, been a long time coming and, um, you know, Jinx, you might have to expand to multiple Telegram channels at that point, but uh, excited. And, and that's a good place to follow along for anybody who's new. Um, Jinx hosts some technically unofficial channels for um, for us. So one of them is the Trading Den, which has a lot of great information about um, price and, and retail kind of happening. So recommend you go over there. Jinx, I don't know if you want to drop that link in the chat. For anybody who's new, I'm going to pop back here real quick and just say a um, couple forum updates. So, creds, uh, Ben made a huge post yesterday. It hasn't gotten any input yet, but um, there's a lot of details in there. And a big shout out to Murdad again for helping put much of this together, including some of how um, technically it will work. And then um, AI first principles, which we talked a little bit about earlier. So, yesterday they had a great conversation. Um, in the ecosystem call. And so you can listen to that. And then I think that that conversation is going to continue both in the forum and in Discord. There's an AI channel for some more uh, discussions. And Dermot, I think you posted yesterday maybe that um, we have a kind of a tiger team at this point led by Olshansky. Um, and then a few other key people are going to be running that. So um, I think from the foundation side, we've realized that we can't take on another big project like this uh, and give it all of the, the attention that it needs. And so having this Tiger team is really going to do, um, it's going to give us a place to start and then people to take it forward. Um, so obviously Olshansky is a very trusted participant. I think Bowen's in it um, and Ramiro as well. And so from there, they'll come up with a proposal of like, how do we take this forward? Uh, Dermot, do you want to add any color to that? Yeah, I, I think it's, um, it goes even beyond just our, our capacity. Actually, it's a, it's a legitimacy point. Um, a lot of people know Pocket. A lot of people don't know the full capability of the Pocket protocol. And to so to establish that legitimacy with the right players inside and outside of crypto, having sorry, getting a call in the background, having um, the right people really give a very clear and simple articulation of Pocket's capabilities, proving its right to win. I expect this light paper will be less than five pages, but with the backgrounds of the people writing it people will look at it and listen and pay attention. And then also once we have this all down on paper, um, it's, it's going to be much, much easier for, for the DAO to coordinate and for all of us to help each other allocate funds, resources, and for the gateways and the other businesses in the community to do their job, uh, to sell more successfully, to talk about why it matters that they're building on pocket, all of those kind of things. So um, yeah, so that that's the purpose. There will be these three leading it because um, yeah, as I mentioned yesterday, just kind of a, a camel is a a horse designed by a committee. Um, and we just want a really small, highly accountable crack team who will then be working with all of the experts and inputs from across the community to make this as successful as possible. But a, but a pretty short timeline um, aiming to get this all done within the next six weeks. So yeah, mid, mid May, kind of latest for publication. Thanks, Dermot. Yeah, I appreciate that extra uh, context. Oh, go on. Yeah, it just if anyone has any questions now or later, please do, because uh, I think that's one of the, the things that we realized with previous community calls is like there's a lot of great things we want to discuss and share, but actually um, having more time for, I guess, open discussion, I think is also great. Uh, I think Jinx does an awesome job uh, with his with his calls, but actually often they run almost run over and run to the end. So I think that's going to be a good part of this call of having that bit more open time for people to discuss. Experiment. Okay. Um, and then we talked a little bit about the Masari report. Jinx, thank you so much for the uh, the update on that in the context. And then creds. Um, I think the big one here is uh, we, we've taken your feedback. Um, we are going to expand the one person, one vote system, not replace it. 
Um, we're still going to use the idea of two houses, so builders and stakers, and they will be weighted. Um, but I think I think in the proposal, Ben said it really nicely here. The governance power continues to accrue to the most knowledgeable and engaged members of the community, which are the builders and stakers, and that it will decay if you are no longer participating in the ecosystem. So um, I'm finding that one of the one of the more uh, I guess obvious but frustrating parts of what I'm doing is like I have to message people to remind them to tune in to vote for proposals. And um, often we don't we don't know how much uh, understanding they have of what's going on right now because some of them are no longer active in the DAO, but they are voters. So the hope is that we're going to be migrating to a system where um, you have to stay engaged to vote and your, I guess, power is actually based on how much knowledge and how engaged you are with the community because we want the most active, engaged people to be uh, participating. So... Uh, some logistical updates. So we know that we're going to be uh, doing some onboarding. So starting next Wednesday, we're going to have weekly office hours just in Discord. Um, so you can jump in and ask questions. You can go through the process. We can uh, do some training on how we expect it to happen. Now, we've got really good documentation at this point. So uh, you can do this all asynchronously if you're looking to do it yourself. But we will have some open office hours for people to come in and make suggestions or talk about any problems that they're having. So um what else is there to know uh we expect to be able to start onboarding next week so while the proposal won't have passed we can start getting people up on the new system we realize there's a bunch of migrations that need to happen as well with the old voters as well as people who have been doing work for the past um i guess year and change so starting from january 1st 2023 through now we'll be migrating people's work into that builder's house um and what else yeah, so basically the new system will go live two weeks from the proposal passing. And I think we plan on putting the proposal up uh, in the next day or so. So does anybody have any creds questions? Again, I think the forum is a really great place to start and there's so much good information there. But happy to field any questions that people have. Um, the last few logistical announcements. So it's the end of the month. So anybody who has a quick grant, you're going to be expected to um, put your update in for the end of the month. We're going to use Karma Gap again. Um, they made some cool upgrades for us over the last month. So now we can do um, basically ZK reviews where um, anybody in the ecosystem can review a quick grant and leave feedback on how valuable they think it is without being doxxed essentially. Um, as well as uh, new milestone updates. So you'll have specific questions to answer with your monthly reporting based on what kind of a, what kind of a grant you're getting. So, you know, some, some quick grants are very technical, some of them are not. So the impact criteria changes a little bit depending on what you are building. Um, so we are, we've implemented that and you should see the changes when you go to post your update this month. And then the retro PGF. So again, there's been some really great work on that. And so we have an announcement coming next week. Um, with a lot of details and uh, we'll be using Karma most likely uh, for the retro PGF as well for all of our reviews. Jinx, thanks for joining us. Okay, anybody have any questions on the announcements, the product updates, any of the things we've talked about so far? Give you all a beat while I set this up. Okay, so we're going to jump into Mentimeter and do what we're calling the RFP Bonanza. So a little bit of context on this. So with Shannon coming, new gateways joining the network, um, the upgrade to the governments, uh, we're anticipating that the community and the DAO voters are going to grow pretty heavily. So with a more active DAO and more participants, we want to give people opportunities to start contributing as soon as they join. Um, and many of you that have been sticking around for the, the last year and a half building, uh, we want to make sure that you have opportunities to continue to get paid and participate in the, job, the DAO as well. So my goal is to start creating a database of opportunities as these new participants come in um, to contribute and be successful. And this is like, it can be anything across the whole ecosystem, right? So uh, node run opportunities, gateways, stakers, DAO voters, or even some of the stuff that Shane's been talking about with bridging into the Cosmos ecosystem. And so what I'm going to ask all of you is if you can join that link, we're just going to go through a little brainstorming process and collect some ideas from you also. Um, again, 
you, most of you have been active lately, but I actually don't think many of you have a DAO vote. And so moving into the new system, all of you are going to be onboarded. And so you're going to be able to deploy some of the DAO funds um, in ways that you think are useful or needed. And so that's kind of the goal of this brainstorm is what are some gaps that you're seeing or what are some things that you think you would like to be building? Uh, and how do we collect those ideas and then start creating kind of a series of RFPs or quick grants or bounties from those ideas for tools to be built? Um, and I think that many of you actually have quick grants already. So there's all there's a lot of opportunities and there's a lot of DAO funds that we can spend on important initiatives and we'd like to collect those. So let's do a little warm up. So if everybody's joined me in Menti, I'd love to see like, what are some of the things you're thinking about day to day? Um, it can be specific to pocket or it can just be in the industry. So what are other things that you're seeing around the um, the Web3 space that are interesting. So, you know, maybe, for example, you're looking at like restaking and thinking that's really cool. Uh, maybe you're thinking about the Cosmos ecosystem and some of the stuff they're doing and thinking about how we're going to bridge over there. Um, maybe you're more thinking about AI or other retail related things. So if anybody wants to leave some ideas, get us started. Feels like a Ferris Bueller thing, like. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Amazing. I see a couple people just joined us. So I put the mentee in the chat. If you want to jump in and help us, we're doing a brainstorming session around what kind of RFPs and what kind of DAO initiatives um, should we be thinking about as we open up the gates to more people participating in our ecosystem. Jerry, do you have background music or something for this? Okay, cool. Deep in revenue, sustainable economics, Shannon growth. Ambassadors, that's an interesting one. Uh, not to put anybody on the spot, anybody want to talk about any of the things they put in there or specifically ambassadors, what they were thinking with that? I uh, dropped the ambassadors in there. was just thinking more about growth via the community by bringing in your friends to something that, you know, has some pretty awesome utility, pretty amazing growth coming, et cetera. So how can we refer other people in and what are the structures and systems and programs that we can build around that to incentivize it and to organize it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a cool idea, right? How are people being rewarded for bringing in new contributors and new participants to the network? Grants program. Does anybody else want to unmute or possibly type in chat what they're thinking about? I'm assuming community strategy came from your end of the world as well, Dan. I don't know if that was me, actually, <laughs> but hmm? that is my world. Totally. Cool. Oh, go I for it, Steve. I had an evangelist. Like technical evangelists. Steve, you had muted. So, sorry, I I added technical evangelists, or I guess it just came out as evangelists. Um, but um, specifically, people who are, uh, or more specifically, in, in, in my opinion, people who are crossing over into um, the AI developer communities and um, showing AI system developers how. AI systems can interact with blockchains uh, and obviously blockchains that Pocket supports. So not node running, more app development, uh, calling APIs kind of stuff.
Am I back? Can anybody hear me? Okay. Yeah. Give that. Guys, uh, they're clearly doing work on my internet today. So, um, Steve, I didn't catch the last of what you said, and I don't know if you caught anything about what I said. Um, yeah, the last thing I said was, wow, this is the first time I don't think that was on me because it usually is like the connection <laughs> deal. So, um, yeah. no, I, serious in all seriousness, I, I, I said, uh, technical evangelists, uh, specifically for, um, uh, evangelizing within the AI communities, how, uh, AI systems can begin using the, the, the various benefits of different blockchains that pocket supports. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I asked after, I don't know if that came through, that like evangelism and ambassadors, like are they, um, and as well as DevRel, like are they actually separate from DevRel or are they kind of like clumped in together? I mean, I, 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 I'm I like technical evangelists and, and developer relations, I think are are kind of the, the same thing. I, I would just mm -hmm. add that like with regard to the AI community, um, the the the, the definition of technical is is really broad. You know, um, technical could mean just people that are writing prompts all the way to people that are training models. Um, so you want right. like developer relations that's uh, aware of the like the, the the spectrum of technical on that side. Yeah, totally appreciate that. And and we've been thinking a lot about DevRel internally. You know, we've seen some of our recent posts are. Um, how are we bringing more technical expertise into the DAO and um, especially into the, the foundation? Having Shane is great for that, but we definitely need more um, more people doing that kind of work. So not to, not to put Dermot on the spot, but I think part of what we're doing over the next couple of weeks is kind of doing that audit. And I don't know if there's anything you want to talk about, Dermot, as far as what kind of technical people we want to bring in or we're looking to work with. Um, yeah, no, it's a good question. I, th I think it's largely more of the same in terms of the need for a, another technical leader to, um, I mean, lead a lot of the initiatives that we're thinking about. So that's not just directly on the protocol level, but also be able to support the protocol team. And as you said, Shane is an amazing bridge. But as we start to think about all of the additional tooling and this RFP bonanza, um, for to make gateway suppliers um their experience even better but actually potentially to help lead on some of the strategic initiatives even some of the comms i think having another brilliant leader with experience of doing this at a tier one project is just going to really help us but um yeah I, I think as we're kind of doing more of this kind of gaps analysis around what it takes to become tier one i think debrail is a clear area um and i see that across probably two areas for now, at least, and I'm sure this will grow over time. And we want to we want to scale through the community as much as possible, but actually there's clearly a need in the, the short term at the very least, if not slightly, it's kind of to the medium term being maybe the next 12 months where we have more people who are pretty close to full time or whatever that looks like, or just at least have some security over payment so they don't need to go elsewhere to other communities. And that's across customer success for gateways. So really thinking about their needs, thinking about their tooling needs, support, onboarding. Um, we're soon going to have six gateways, which is awesome. Um, but actually, we hope to have many, many more and across not just blockchain RPC, um, whether that's for a particular deep in network that you can use Pocket for its incentivized uh, RPC, whether that's oracles, indexing. And of course, people are already talking about 
what we can do with other data sources such as um, AI as well, um, and even selling to those markets. So yeah, that, that's one side, customer success, um, helping people to gateway server and everything connected to that. And then classic DevRel, um, as, as Steve was talking about, and that's kind of bottom-up approach, being in the right communities, um, the right forums, the right discords, just helping solve problems and then you know being able to link that back wherever relevant to Pocket without being too shilly. So it's kind of really authentic marketing, um, helping people with documentation and explainers and all that good stuff. So um, they're they're probably the most immediate, obvious needs, but I think some of that will grow as, yeah, I guess we we grow as a community and as a project, um, and those needs become more apparent. But is there anything else you think I, I missed there from our conversation, Zach? No, I think that I pretty much nailed it as far as the technical side. Um, yeah, and so with that in mind, I think if anybody does have any people that would be great evangelists or DevRel or or if they can slot in in that. In that arena in any way um invite them into the community calls uh have them join feel free to send me or dermot a dm and uh, we can welcome them in because as we're getting bigger especially like you were saying dermot as we get closer to that tier one project I anticipate there's so much growth that we're just going to need uh, more people and so bring your smart friends everybody All right, I'm going to move um, through the next question here, which is, are there any current or recent pocket initiatives that you think are exciting? And so this is just kind of a, a quick check on like what's going on currently within the, the ecosystem that you're like, man, I would love to do more of this or get behind this. And after this one's going to be a bit of brainstorming around like what don't we have, so... I'm going to leave a long, awkward silence while we type. Cool. So I'm just going to read through a couple of the answers here, but um, clear, obvious winner is AI in four of the answers. So um, talking about questing, so uh, retaining users, uh, coming into the DAO f through progression and onboarding them into the ecosystem and rewarding them. And that's a thing we've been talking about and thinking about as well as, hey, I'm new to the ecosystem, but there's not much for me to do. Are there simpler systems than opening a, a grant um, to get them to keep coming back and joining something like an ecosystem call or participating in uh, some form of, of the community? So we're seeing AI light paper, education awareness around AI narrative, AI period. Um, Governance upgrade and refinements like Karma Gap and AI and DPIN, that's great. Governance upgrades, that's awesome. And I am I am very excited to see the governance upgrades and giving everybody here a vote that doesn't have one. I think many of you have been showing up for months now and um, would be very excited to see what you can do when you are able to influence the decisions in the, in the DAO. Gateway on onboarding is a big one. Like Dermot said, we have six gateways and getting more of them. Projects with Raid Guild feels a little bit biased, but I agree. Very excited about that as well. Cool, guys. Um, really appreciate the, the input here. And we're going to move into the last section here, and then um, we should be able to wrap up a little bit e earlier. So spelled RFP is wrong. Forgive me, guys. So with the RFPs and grants in mind, what are some things that you want to see built? And I'm saying, like, here's our opportunity to dream big and small. So... Are we missing tooling? Are there full-on initiatives that you're seeing in other uh, tier one projects that are just not being addressed here? Do you have any ideas of things that you've wanted to build for years and you're like, I just don't have the time, the capacity, the money to do it? Or maybe you actually want to make it a reality and need to be funded to do that. Um, and are there any other collaborations that we need? So this is really like, if, if we're gonna go through and do an audit of everything we could possibly build over the next six-ish months, what would we like to see become a reality?
Anybody want to talk about the tier one gateway experience? Feels like a, a broad, there's a lot of things that that could be broken out into, and I'd love to actually do that. Yeah, I don't want to be the person hogging all this. Uh, I'd love more input on this from what other people think. For me, it's removing as much friction as possible for gateway businesses um, when they want to use a protocol. And I think Pocket Center are a lot of really smart things uh, to date. However, we've probably asked too much of our community and stakeholders at times, which has probably constrained our growth on both the supply and demand sides at different periods. So the more we can reduce that friction, the the more businesses that can join as suppliers as well as gateways. So that's going to be, for me, it's predictable pricing. Um, how do you get notifications and the tooling around that? So if you're, you know, your demand spikes, so you don't just stop um, giving service to your customers because all of the centralized giants, they they don't shut you off straight away they just charge you more um and maybe if you're not paying eventually they'll uh, they'll shut you off but um just thinking of the overage thinking of all of these elements that are what it takes to have world-class businesses building um using pocket as their back end um just thinking through all of those those steps so being super user-centric about it um yeah that's what comes to mind for me at least but yeah i would love to hear from others as they think about that whether from gateways or suppliers i see someone said one click staking and wallets like i mean that whole staking experience the supplier experience all, all needs to be made way better along with the transparency around performance of what what you expect to get as an end user also as a gateway but also as a supplier of how much am i expecting to earning uh, expected to earn and actually um am i doing a good job how can i improve Are we supposed to share thoughts here, or is that just supposed to go into the form? Zach, so no, I share thoughts. Vote. I'll take notes. You share them. Um, th this is more on the supply side, uh, uh, and, and I guess um, like it, you know, prior to to what Shannon will, will do, but but even from what I understand, maybe something that that could be addressed by Shannon is like right now, if you're a node runner. Um, there, you know, it's it's almost like having a shop with a bunch of products that you can sell that are all priced exactly the same, but you don't know what the demand's going to be for any one of those products. But you've got to keep them in inventory anyway. Uh, there, there's no way to like charge more for an archi archival archival node than you know, a, like a regular node. And 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 it's uh, for for node running, it's like it's a really tricky thing. Um, and, and I know some of that's going to change, but uh, there's there's no more cost on the buy side for gaining access to relays that might cost 10 times more on the supply side. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm articulating that clearly, but that is one thought challenge that I have. Yeah, let me let me see if I understand. But basically, you're saying some chains cost a lot more to run from a node runner side, and there's no differentiation between getting that data. Yes. Uh, yeah. However, just to add to the complexity, it, it, it's not just about like what they cost to run more. It's a combination of what they cost and how much traffic you're getting uh, relative to the cost. So you could have a case where um, the the volume warrants the increased costs uh but not always and and without like really good metrics to see that where you can see sort of profitability by relay versus just overall you know kind of what the network's doing it, it's just really tough for uh smaller node runners and and you know by smaller like uh, you know I'm, I'm only running one node now but i was running over 800 at one point and you know, it still wasn't really viable because there's there's just not enough uh, economies of scale to absorb the inefficiencies. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, yeah, I really wish there was a, a Shane in this one. Um, but yeah, that's a great call out. 
I, and, I, can I, I, have, I have talked to Shane about it and he, yeah, definitely would be really helpful in this conversation. Cause yeah, he, uh, he, he shared some, some thoughts, you know, on it, but it, it, it's, it's probably a, an economics tokenomics question. Uh, so maybe not as, as simple as like, what's the, you know, the, the best initiative to focus on in the next six months. I, I actually think it's 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 incredibly important. So yeah, for me, speaking to Shane, we're super aligned that this needs to be ready for Shannon, ideally. And part of that's going to be Max Chains reducing that. Um, but then also the clarity and the dashboards of, hey, I'm a infrastructure provider for whatever data source Paco cares about. Um, these are my specs. What can I expect to earn? Um, what's my payoff period, all of that stuff. So that needs to be super clear and obvious um, and be able to track that. So these are things we can definitely do. And part of it, I think, is transparency and tooling. And then also part of it is going to be just um, just better economics because we want to ensure we're incentivizing for um, the smaller players as well as the big players. Because as you said, the economies of scale are, are really winning out right now. And yeah, anyway, but just as an aside, so we will be looking to onboard more big and small post Shannon. Um, but I don't expect this to happen pre Shannon because it will require consensus breaking changes to our economics. But we really want to start that conversation as soon as possible. So yeah, we'd love your thoughts, Steve, and as well as everyone else. Thanks, Dermot. And thanks, Steve. Yeah, that's an important call out. Somebody else go off mute. Yeah. I was just saying, and just, I guess, related is, is just, um, you know, I've been involved uh, with the pocket community since, you know, the before the mainnet was launched. And I, I still really don't have my head fully around the economics, you know, like uh, things like, you know, a simple question, you know, like how much, uh, how much does it cost? effectively like there you know there's inflows and outflows on the network right the inflows are the, the the people that are using tokens to send relays and the outflows are you know the tokens being mitted to pay uh the the, the node runners um so you know when i think of just like economics it seems like you should be able to see here is the the total revenue that was generated inflows and here are the total uh costs that were incurred outflows um, but it's not that simple uh, with Pocket, of course, uh, you know, without without like breaking down the details. But I think for for the community, you know, having some way to to like quickly look at, you, you know, this is what the network generated. You know, this is what it costs to generate that would, would get us closer to, I think, what, what's really important, uh, like overall for for the network health is like, what is the actual cost of uh, a relay? you know not not what are we charging for it, but what is the cost for it and you know in in on the supply side are we uh are, are we pricing that competitively uh and you know if say hypothetically um you know amazon decided to do this themselves like they they decided oh you know what like we're gonna provide a gateway to uh you know all of these blockchains uh, and and we own the the hardware and the systems and the infrastructure. So you know we're just gonna like do it at cost or above cost because there's a big opportunity there. Like what does that look like? And and I think without being able to understand that clearly uh, from like a, a, a network perspective makes positioning uh, kind of challenging. Yeah, I took that note, um, Steve. That's really helpful. I think, you know, at, like Dermot was saying, more transparency is obviously in everybody's best interest here. And so um, this is a great thing to build into like a proposal for Shannon as we're going into that. And I don't know how much back end work it would be to get like accurate info around all that. So um, maybe some of the gateway people that are on the call can say if that's even reasonable or not. Yeah, and I'm not like I, I'm definitely not like I think it, the the community is awesome and, and and very transparent. I've never run into any uh, like 
walls at all trying to to to, to get answers it, it, it's just there's a lot of like effort to get that and you know it seems like uh even with just some like documentation to to sort of clarify how things work you know in, in a simplified form today to to really connect all the dots you you've really got to go through and like read all of the different proposals that have passed and kind of string them all together to to create you know sort of a even a semblance of understanding of like what's going on and mm -hmm. um it, that 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 might that might come off to some people is you know obfuscating what's happening but in reality i think that's not the case the the community is very transparent it's just complex but you know uh maybe overly complex That's a, that's another good one. And, um, yeah, I think to your point that some of the changes that happen happen and then we move on as opposed to like going through and updating how that affects all the other pieces of the protocol. So, um, yeah, I, mean, I don't know if that falls under like up to date documentation or like more of, um, yeah, I'll think on that, but there's there's something in there around like how are we making sure that all of the changes that are being made are actually being explained um, back in like some of the base protocol uh, explanations that we have, I guess. So let me let me take a note of that. And I think we're we're coming up on time here. So uh, if anybody has any other ideas, please throw them in there. Um, otherwise, I'll just kind of open floor for the next two, three minutes. And if anybody has any questions, thoughts, concerns. We're here. I posted on the forum just today uh, before the call a um, like a, an AI go to market strategy concept that I've been working on uh, just as a, a, a call for um, comments, thoughts, and responses on that. I'll, I'll post in the channel uh, here as well. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, there's been a lot of discussion, so um, excited to have that. And uh, I think, I don't know if you're on the call when Dermot was talking about it, but um, it seems like we have a good team in place, so I'm sure they're going to be excited to see your thoughts. And I don't know, feels like AI is the hot topic. All right, everybody. With that, I think we're going to wrap up the call. Thank you all for participating. Thank you for helping me brainstorm. If anybody thinks of anything after the call, you can always DM me. Um, my DMs are open. And we will have those office hours next week for the new onboarding. And yeah. Otherwise, everybody enjoy your weekend. If you celebrate Easter, enjoy that. Talk to you all soon.